Good morning. Today is Thursday, August the 11th, and our lesson this morning is A Living Hope Through Mercy. A Living Hope Through Mercy. And our lesson is coming from 1 Peter, the first chapter, the third verse through the ninth. And we do have a living hope through God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The scripture lesson text read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love and whom though we though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls amen this is a wonderful and powerful lesson we have this morning that we receive through the blessed and mercy of Jesus Christ, salvation, and that he is with us continually and get help us and guide us and strengthen us if we would listen and open our hearts unto him. I'm going to read you a passage from the um, Matthew Henry Concise Commentary. It says, Hope in the world's phrase refers only to an uncertain good for all worldly hopes are tottering, built upon sand, and the worldlings' hope of heaven are blind and groundless conjectures. But the hope of the Son of the living God is a living hope, not only as to its object, but as to its effect. Also, it enlivens and comforts in all distresses, enables to meet and get over all difficulties. Mercy is the spring of all this. Yea, great mercy and manifold mercy, and this well-grounded hope of salvation is an active and living principle of obedience in the soul of the believer. The matter of a Christian's joy is the remembrance of the happiness laid up for him. It is incorruptible. It cannot come to nothing. It is an estate that cannot be spent. Also undefiled, this signifies its purity and perfection. And it fadeth not, is not sometimes more or less pleasant, but ever the same, still like itself. All possessions here are stained with defects and failings. Still something is wanting. Fair housing have said Sad cares flying about the gilded and sealed roofs. Soft beds and full tables are often with sick bodies and uneasy stomachs. All possessions are stained with sin, either in getting or using them. How ready we are to turn the things we possess into occasions and instruments of sin, and to think there is no liberty or delight in their use without abusing them. Worldly possessions are uncertain and soon pass away, like the flowers and plants of the field, that must be of the greatest worth, which is laid up in the highest and best place in heaven. Happy are those whose hearts the Holy Spirit sets on this inheritance. God not only gives his people grace, but preserves them unto glory. Every believer has always something wherein he may greatly rejoice. It should show itself in the countenance and conduct. The Lord does not willingly afflict, yet his weak, wise love often appoints sharp trials to show his people their hearts and to do them good at the latter end. 
God does not increase by trial in the fire. It becomes less, but faith is made firm and multiplied by troubles and afflictions. Gold must perish at last and can only purchase perishing things, while the trial of faith will be found to praise and honor and glory. Let this reconcile us to present afflictions. Seek then to believe Christ excellence in himself and his love to us. This will kindle such a fire in the heart as will make it rise up in a sacrifice of love to him. And the glory of God and our own happiness are so un- are so united that if we sincerely seek the one now, we shall attain the other when the soul shall no more be subject to evil. The certainty of this hope is as if believers had already received it. Amen. This is a powerful lesson teaching us that through grace and mercy that God through our trials and tribulations, our troubles that we go through, that God uses those to strengthen us, to make us strong, to bring us closer to him, to make us more uh, pure of heart, to, to, to bring us to where we need to be, to be able to walk in his love and his guidance. I pray that you meditate on this lesson today, and y'all have a wonderful and blessed day.